I'm Chris and I just wanted to give you a quick introductory look at how to graph hyperbolas. So if you're dealing with conic sections, which means you're on the chapter that covers circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas, this is going to be your brand new introductory look at hyperbolas. If you've already seen these and you're pretty comfortable but you need to look at some of the finer points or some of the tougher questions like where you have to complete the square for example, uh, then click here and you can take a look at some of our more advanced videos. But for this problem, we're just getting a first look at how to graph a hyperbola. So the equation that you have for a hyperbola is shown here. And it's important that if we look at this equation, we can identify a couple of things. We want to identify the center, the value of A, and the value of B. So for a hyperbola, similar to what you've probably already seen for a circle and for an ellipse, the center that you have is going to be 4, negative 1 because you're pulling that from the value of h and the value of k in your standard form. And the value of a, this part's a little bit different for an ellipse. If you remember in an ellipse that a was always the larger number. So when you had an a squared and a b squared under your x and y terms, you always picked the larger value. So here a would be 4 and b would be 3 if this were an ellipse. But for a hyperbola it works a little bit differently. For hyperbolas, a squared is always the denominator of the first term in your expression. a squared always goes first. So a squared is 9, which means a is 3 and b is 4 for this. And then if you need to find c, for example, if you're asked to find the foci, um, that equation is also going to be a little bit different from an ellipse. It's going to look a little bit more like Pythagorean theorem. c squared will equal a squared plus b squared. And when you solve that for this, you'll get 9 plus 16. And when you solve that, you'll get c equals 5. So those are a couple of the differences that you'll notice with uh, hyperbolas that are a little bit different from what you may have already seen in dealing with ellipses. So now let's take a look and see how we would graph something like this. And this is going to be just a rough sketch because, again, this is just a quick introduction to how we graph hyperbolas. So we have our axes, and our center is at 4, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 1. So we'll have a point there representing the center. And then A represents the distance between the center and the vertex of each. So parabolas will either look like this or like this. And that's going to be determined by what value goes first, whether you're looking at an x squared term first or a y squared term first. In this case, when you have the x value first, your hyperbola is going to have this shape to it. And so when we go to graph it, we're going to start from the center. And since a is 3, that means to find each vertex, we're going to count 3 units to the right and 3 units to the left. And our hyperbola will have a shape to it that makes it look something like this. Now, if you want a more exact graph of exactly what this equation will be represented as graphically, then one thing that you'll see in some of our more advanced videos you can use the values of A and B to figure out where the asymptotes cross the center. And when you calculate those asymptotes, that will show you the actual lines that the hyperbolas will approach, um, yet not touch, so that you can come up with a more exacting graph. But for right now, this is just going to be our quick introduction to figuring out the overall shape of a hyperbola and figuring out the values of the coordinates of the center and the value of a, b, and c from your standard form equation. For more, please feel free to watch some of our other videos, and thanks for watching.